Hi everyone, I'm Peter. Welcome to the Ozaki Cover SDK Video Guide Tutorial Part 8. In this tutorial, I will create a simple project to connect IP camera or USB camera and stream the camera image to smartphone. This is the 8th video guide from our c camera tutorial series in which we present how to use Ozaki Cover SDK to develop different kinds of camera solutions. This SDK is only compliant, easy to use, useful and practical. Whether you are a beginner or an experienced c sharp developer, you will certainly be able to implement the solutions presented in this tutorial videos, if you use this camera SDK. This is gonna be a great video series, they contain short and practical code explanations. You will love it. In this video, the main steps are the following. First step, download the SDK from the website. Second step, create WPF solution in Visual Studio. Third step, implementing the camera viewer application. Fourth step, extend the application with streaming of the camera to smartphone function. And finally, the fifth step, check the result and we try out our application. And let's start now with the step one. Before we start the developing, we will need the Ozaki camera SDK. You can download it on the www.camera-sdk.com. You need to registrate yourself, which means add a name, email address and the reason why you need this SDK. After that you will get the downloading link. The installation is simple but if you are not sure you can find the description on the quick start section of an our website. First, we have to create a new WPF solution. Click on the new project button and choose the WPF project. And give a name to the project and select the folder. And after that, click on the AC button. When the project is opened, we have to add the Ozaki VoIP SDK as a reference. Right click on the reference and add reference button. When you found the file, click on the AC button. We can see the VoIP SDK reference in the reference list. We will need some control to handle our project. We need two group box control to separate USB camera and IP camera. The USB camera group box has two buttons to connect and disconnect to camera. Moreover, the IP camera group box has a little bit more control. Need three text box for authentication. We have to give the current IP address and username and password if it's required. And necessary two button to connect and disconnect to camera. Furthermore, we will create a camera viewer in a camera box control. Finally, we create one more group box for the new features that we will implement in the following tutorials. When the controls are ready, I create the buttons click event and I delete the useless items. And I resize our application. We 
we have to add four namespaces Ozaki Media IP Camera Ozaki Media Media Handlers Ozaki Media Media Handlers Video and Ozaki Media Video Controls we need some variable to handle our application we need a video weaver control a bitmap source provider ip camera and web camera instance and moreover we need a media connector We initialize the media connector and the bitmap source provider in the main constructor. After that, we create and set the camera weaver control and add it to the grid called camera box. And we have to set the bitmap source provider instance to the video weaver control. Finally, we have to write the connect and the disconnect buttons. We will get the default device to our web camera instance and start the viewer and connect our web camera to the media connector. In the disconnect USB camera click event, we stop the viewer and the web camera. These were the web camera start and stop methods. Now we implement the connect and the disconnect buttons for the IP camera. We have to know what is the correct IP address of the camera. We probably need username and password for the connection. Based on the given data, we connect to the selected IP camera and start the viewer and the IP camera in the connect button click event. In the disconnect IP camera click event, we stop the viewer and the IP camera. These were the IP camera connect and disconnect methods. And now I extend the XML code. I create a list box and a group box control which will contain the other controls. I define the rows and the columns within the group box control. I need a text box which will contain the server address in the text property. Moreover, it is possible to provide the port number in an additional text box, but this is optional. Finally, I will need two more buttons for starting the server and for stopping that, and I have to set the buttons click events. Start server, click event, and stop server, click event. I remove the unnecessary rows. And now I have to add a class to my project. Name my server. I also have to use some namespaces in my class. Ozaki Media IP Camera, Ozaki Media IP Camera Server, 
and Ozaki Media Media Handlers. I need to set a base class to my server class. This base class is the IP camera server class. I need a media connector and IP camera client object and I will use a video sender property in the future. I also need an event. I initialize the media connector in the main constructor. Clients change the method. This method will indicate when a new client connects or disconnects from our server. Due to the base class, I can overwrite some methods. I overwrite the onClientConnected method and in this method I will connect the client to the image of the camera. And I call the changed method. I also override the onClientDisconnected method. In this method, I will disconnect the client from the image of the camera. My server class is ready now. Let's continue implementing the other class. I need a video sender object, which will contain the image of the camera. And I need an instance from my server class. I initialize the my server instance in the constructor. The video sender instance should be equal to the image of the web camera. And to the video channel of the IP camera. And I have to assess the GUI thread. I have to write an invoke method. I will start the server in the start server click event. And I have to know the correct details. I provide the value of the video sender to the video sender of the my server instance. I subscribe to an event which I defined in the my server class. And I start the server and I set the listening address. In the on client count changed event, I will fill in the list box with the remote endpoint property of the connected clients. In the stop server click event, I unsubscribe from the event and I stop the server. Now we are ready, let's try out our application. I try to connect one IP camera. I have to provide the correct detailed information. And push down the connect button and the camera image is appeared. For starting the server, I have to know what is my IP address. And I set my IP address.
and I also have to set the port number. I start the server and I try to connect to my server via my personal smartphone. First you need to have an application which you will connect to the server. For example, you can download the VLC media player from the mobile store. It's free. I will use the VLC player to connect it to the server. Let's start the application and I try to connect. I have to provide the network address and the authentication. and open the address. The camera image is appeared and the client's information is in the list box. Now I can see the camera image on my smartphone. It is really useful. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel and if you want to learn more about further free solutions provided by Osaki Phone SDK, then download the entire version from our website, camerasdk.com. For more information, check out our website, and if you have any question, send us an email to info at camerasdk.com. In the next chapter, David will build an application which streams the camera image to website. It is gonna be exciting and easy. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video. Bye!